All right, everybody, today is going to be a good old-fashioned gear review. Is there anything more exciting than talking about gear? I think not. I'm going to base this review on what has worked for me over the years, but I'm also going to start with a suggestion for a simple setup for those of you that might just be getting started and thinking about bike packing or bike touring. This is actually a really difficult topic because obviously it's very personal in what people bring with them, but everybody always says the same thing. Oh, on my first tour, I brought way too much stuff. And the truth is, I did, I still do, chances are you are as well. So don't carry that burden. I bring a combination of needs and wants. And what works for me might not work for other people. Personally, I don't mind carrying a few extra pounds if I might be able to anticipate an emergency or quite frankly, just be slightly more comfortable. One time I camped next to a bike packer who when it came time to go to bed at night, he wrapped up in a cheap plastic tarp. No tent, no sleeping bag, no pillow, no pad. That was it. And it rained. And so I leaned out of my tent and asked him if he was okay. He looked perfectly happy and good for him. That's awesome. That's not me. Now, at the same time, I'm also trying not to bring a whole house along with me when I go on a trip. So again, this is very personal. If you disagree, look, let's remain friends, okay? I'm going to start with a basic setup. I'm assuming that some of you might just be getting into bike packing or bike touring and you don't want to break the bank when you first start and that's a good thing. So three items I would highly recommend. One is a good frame bag. Now they come in all kinds of different sizes but I've gone from a very slim model to one with extra pockets but generally I keep my phone, my money, any items that I really need to get access to quickly. When I went on my very first tour, I bought this simple little saddle bag that connects with the seat post and connects to the back of your seat. Um, it's amazingly roomy. I think it's about 14 liters in here, which is about the size of a, of a maybe a smaller type pannier. But for an overnight trip, absolutely perfect. It's uh, fairly inexpensive. I think this was maybe $50. Really, really uh, flexible. And again, the nice part is you don't need racks to be able to use something like this. And then the third item that I'd highly recommend is a good handlebar bag. This is also made by Roswheel. Um, huh. Okay, um, nice easy mounts to the handlebars. And this particular model's got lots of pockets and a couple gathered spaces here on the front. Um, but I generally put everything in here that won't fit in the other two bags. Now, that's it. For many years, that's all I used for bike touring. And it was perfect for overnight, maybe two nights on the road, a three day trip. But everything that I needed was right there. I know there's people that are hesitant to go riding until they buy all of this gear. And I have two things to say about that. You don't have to wait for great gear to go out and bike tour. Uh, the second thing is start with things that are a little bit cheaper so that you learn what works for you and then you can start uh, to build um, onto more elaborate gear. So why did I get into more elaborate gear? Well, I started looking into more rugged trips and I started expanding the amount of time that I was going to be out from two or three days to a week or two weeks. And I actually still use this gear when I travel with friends or maybe my sons. I'll load this on their bikes uh, and then I'll take the rest of their gear on mine because, well, I'm a super dad and I'm a great friend. Uh, but it also makes it more simple for them. Okay, so let's move on to my current setup. I'm not going to talk about food. It's highly personal. All that I can say is I almost always bring food that I don't eat because there's always food en route. If I believe that there's not going to be food available, I may go with something like, um, this is Mountain House Adventure Meals, uh, good old chicken and dumplings. Um, these work great. And some of them taste okay, some of them taste like cardboard. Otherwise, it's instant coffee and oatmeal for me. Not terribly exciting. I'm also not going to talk about clothes because I don't think anything gets more personal than that. There's two things that I try to think about with clothes. One, I always want to have one extra outfit that I can get into after a day of riding. I want to get out of my sweaty stuff, get into something that's comfortable so I can relax. 
The other non-negotiable for me is that I want to have a clean pair of padded shorts or a padded liner for each day. Now, obviously, if you're doing laundry on a regular basis, you don't have to bring multiple pairs of these, but riding in a dirty, sweaty pair of padded shorts just leads towards saddle sores and blisters and stuff that you just don't want to deal with. Okay, this was my original tour bike, a Cannondale R1000 I bought back in 2001. Uh, I took it to a bike shop recently and they called it an antique, but I just want to share this real quickly because I know many people think they need to go buy a new bike right away. I made do with this bike for almost two years of touring. And uh, with that basic setup that I shared, uh, I mounted this on my bike and uh, it worked fantastic. I kind of miss this thing. I don't ride it very often anymore, but I've had so many memories with it. I just can't bear to part with it. This is my real go-to bike. It's a Trek Checkpoint ALR5. And if my Cannondale was a sports coupe, this is really my truck. It's a super solid ride. Absolutely love it. I didn't go with um, the carbon models because I wasn't sure how they would hold up over time. Um, and I didn't even think about the suspension forks because I just didn't want the added weight. But there's just no complaints. It's super flexible for both on and off-road riding. Um, heck, I don't even remove the racks when I go on local, local group rides, which usually draws stairs, but I just, I hate removing them. Um, I run with 40s in the front and back, and I go tubeless, which um, also helps a little bit with the weight. And knock on wood, I haven't had a flat in um, several years. So to me, this is a super flexible cross between um, on and off-road. And I use this the majority of the time. Now, if I'm switching to off-road or single track, um, I move to my Trek Farley uh, 5. When I bought this, I actually had a mountain bike, but I've since given that one away. So this is my main trail ride. Um, I had some custom racks fitted to the back and some dry bag ca cages on the front. Um, it's great on trails and in crummy weather, and I even used this once in the snow, which was really fun. But that's really, that's the key word for this bike. It's really about fun. I've never felt like four-inch tires were totally necessary. Um, again, with this, I didn't go for a suspension system. When you inflate the tires to 10 PSI or less, you just glide over rocks and roots. Um, I also go tubeless on this bike. Um, which has a really big effect in the overall weight. So the big thing is whether a positive or negative, it's amazing how many people stop me to talk about this bike. It's just a real conversation starter. Um, a park ranger stopped me one time to say motorcycles were not allowed on the trails. And then he saw that it was a bike <laughs> and he wanted to ride it himself. So I was happy to let him do that. And don't tell my son, I hope he's not listening, um, I had him ride this when we did the Gap CNO, and it slowed him down just enough for me to keep up. So, um, sorry, kiddo. Okay, enough talk about the rig. Now, what do I carry on it? I'm going to start with a luxury item, and then I'm going to work my way back to more basics. At the end of the day, one thing that I really enjoy is a camp chair. And I'm not talking about a three-legged stool. I'm talking about something with a back on it. This is made by Click. It's not the lightest weight chair on the on the market but it's incredibly sturdy well it's almost like new this has been through a lot of miles with me well i don't want to lean up against a tree or a post or just sit on the ground it is so comfortable i've actually fallen asleep in this at, at the end of the day so um it's a luxury but something that i carry with me in terms of paneers um, i keep it pretty simple these are um i, I don't know if it's pronounced thule or tool um, these are these are very very roomy i keep these on the back um, and then I have a pair of Fort Lieb gravel um, paneers that I keep on the front, a little bit smaller. These are more expensive, um, but I guess time will tell if these are going to be more rugged than, say, the other option. In terms of a tent, I started with an inexpensive um, Alps Mountaineering Lynx one-person tent. Um, it worked really great for me for a long time. I slept through storms and wind. It was great. But recently I decided I wanted to upgrade and I really wanted to change two things. I was looking for more room and I was also looking for a better way to mount this on my bike. So I went with the Big Agnes. I've got to read this. It's just too long. Big Agnes Copper Spur HV UL1 Ultralight Bike Packing Tent. This has been awesome. Okay. 
it mounts really easily right onto the handlebars, which is cool. It's got this nice little integrated setup with the poles and stakes and the tent inside. Why a two-person tent, you ask? Well, I've never slept with someone in a tent. Uh, the missus is not into camping, but there's times at the end of the day when I want to bring some of my gear into the tent, like when I don't want to go to war with uh, raccoons at night, um, and I just don't want to be so claustrophobic. I got stuck in a rainstorm for about six hours one time, sitting in a one-person tent. That was not fun. But I love the dual fly part of this, the two entry points on either side of it. Um, it's really easy to set up and take down like most tents. Um, but having said that, I really like this. My old tent worked great. Um, so this was really more of a luxury than a necessity. Okay, let's stay on the same theme and talk about sleeping gear. I don't really use a sleeping bag in a traditional sense. I sleep pretty warm at night. So I bought a really inexpensive $35 sleeping bag um, that worked great, but generally I unzip it and use it just as a blanket. Which led me during the summer months to think about just bringing along a sheet, which I did for a few trips. But cotton sheets get really heavy in your panniers, so what I finally arrived at was this, which is a little um, liner. It's just a sleeping bag liner. As you can see, it's really small. It scrunches down into something that's that's half the size of a sleeping bag. This was my original sleeping bag. Here's my liner. Um, the sleeping bag came in a nice bag that had some uh, cinch straps on the side of it. It ripped. So now you can see how bulky this thing is. But um, if it's going to be colder, or I'm afraid it's going to be colder, I may take this along. Um, the other thing that I'll generally do is just keep some clothes nearby. And if I get cold in my liner, then uh, I'll put on some more clothes. I do carry a sleep pad, uh, my little sleepingo um, pad. It's, again, inexpensive. It works just great. Um, I don't find so much of like comfort sleeping on a pad as much as it keeps the moisture and the cold ground coming up uh, onto me when I'm sleeping. This is one of those items where you can spend $300, and I've never quite understood what people are getting out of that, but um, to each his own. All right, finally, probably one of my favorite items is my little jet boil that I really, really, really enjoy. This is the Zip model, but having said that, I don't really cook when I'm traveling. One time I made a beef stew from ingredients I bought in a grocery store, but that's just, that's not me. I'm not a chef on the road, so I generally am heating up water for those freeze-dried meals or for uh, coffee and oatmeal in the morning. But having said all that, I really, really love this unit. Everything fits really compactly inside of this. Compactly? It fits compactly. It's super fast. Um, this will heat water faster than a microwave. Um, again, really small. The newer models, the, um, this is the Zip. The Flash comes in all kinds of cool colors and designs. Um, the other thing that's kind of nice about that is it's got an integrated uh, igniter on the actual unit. I have to carry a lighter or matches for something like this, but I'm not upgrading. This is perfect. Okay, a couple runner-up items that I want to discuss here. One is I generally bring fire starters. This is a really simple little package. I'll throw four or five of these in if I know that I'm going to be trying to make a fire. Um, this is actually a fairly big piece. I'll cut this in half and get, get two fires out of something like this. But you know, when you come into a campground and it's late and you don't want to be messing with, maybe it's been raining and these are super, super helpful because you can make a fire uh, really quickly. I have an extender on uh, my handlebars, which just kind of helps to create more room for my hands. I mount my GoPro on that and it keeps the field of view of my GoPro not picking up the hoods or my hands in the front of it. I sometimes bring a frame bag on my bike. Um, with my old tent, I used to put the poles on one side of it and my repair gear on the other. Um, my frustration with that is I had a model that it, it, it interrupts with your um, water bottles and you can't get them in and out. I got one that's a little bit, it mounts a little bit higher, so I took care of that problem. And then finally, pedals. I started with clips and then I moved to straps and now I just use traditional 
pedals. The biggest reason is it just keeps me from having to carry another pair of shoes. Um, it's a whole lot less complicated. Okay, so there you have it. I hope that was helpful. Um, if you've got other ideas or you want to share some notes or some other things about other gear, please put it in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think. If you like this video, please, 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 please subscribe. Best wishes for your own adventure, and I really hope we cross paths sometime soon.